Hello everyone, and welcome back to Total War Rome 2. I've got a little bit more traditional of a replay for you today, so I figured that we would throw in a little bit more traditional music in the background. So, for those of you as old as myself in the Total War community, you can enjoy those sweet, sweet Rome 1 music tones. Yeah, this is going to be a clan battle, and it's going to be a 3 versus 3, but this is not a sub-commander's 3 versus 3. Not that we don't enjoy those, we do. But this is a more traditional full army, three versus three, between some excellent players here in Rome 2, and I hope you all are ready for an epic throwdown, uh, because it is, it's going to be a big one. Um, so as we take a look at the battlefield, we are going to have the Mesesali, the Nervii, and Parthia facing off against Cush, Iceni, and Tylus. So some really nice factions here, we should get a good variety of play from some of these factions and we should have a good time. I'll start off with the blue and yellow bannered armies. I'm going to call them the home team here, and then all the red outlined banners are going to be the away team. <clears throat> oh man, that Rome 1 music slaps. All right, so here we go. We've got a Numidian Noble Cav General, and we've got some armored Numidian Riders with them. There is some uh, heavy Numidian Skirmishers supporting this formation. I like that, especially out here on the, the cavalry expected flank. Uh, tribal Slingers up front, and Desert Legionaries uh, coming down the middle, and a couple of Desert Cohort uh, mixed in there as well. So Legionaries, maybe one or two Cohort. And then with the Nervii in the middle, there's some Celtic Slingers up front. We've got some Celtic Warriors mixed with Levy Freeman up front. And then the main sword line is actually going to be a lot of Oathsworn. So there are four Oathsworn, which is a tremendously powerful sword line. And then mixed in there is a single Fierce Sword. And then there's some Mighty Horse. If we go take a look at Parthia, Parthia has gone with a very unconventional, well, a very conventional Parthia build. It's a very unconventional standard build. There's a, a lot of Slingers up front. There's going to be five of those, and then they are backed up only by Hillmen. And then behind them is a wall of Cataphracts. We have Eastern Cataphracts, Camel Cataphracts, more Easterns, Camels, Eastern Camels. So they're mixed in now. Remember, Camels scare horses. So it gives a scare effect. We've got three Mercenary Sarmatian Horse Archers and a Noble Horse Archer General. I'm actually going to slow it down for just a second here before we get into this conflict. Kush is across the way, and they have some Slave Spears and Slave Infantry backed up by Slave Slingers, but their infantry line is looking very dangerous here. We have a long line of Chotel Warriors <coughs> backed up by Swordsmen and Armored Chotel Warriors, but the real meat of this Kush army is in the cavalry. They have some armored desert cavalry, two of those, but they are supporting three Royal Kushite guards. These are very powerful melee cav. For the Britons, they have a big line of slingers up here. So they've got their Briton slingers with slightly better attack than the Celtic slingers. There's a couple of chosen spear bands supporting a main line of chosen sword band. There's a heroic noble general um, and another chosen sword band back here and some veteran riders and Britain scout riders in support. And then on to Tylus. Tylus has a single noble horse, some skirmish cavalry over here, some raiding horsemen. Um, and then their slinger line is a ton of Celtic slingers led by spear warriors. But that main line is a mix of tribal warriors and oath sworn, which means that this is going to be a very heavily armored, um, somewhat defensive, but the oath sworn will be plenty offensive battle line. So we are ready to see this thing unfold. And immediately in the middle, we get a lot of action between the Nervii and the Iceni. This is going to be a significant showdown here. Right, I tried to balance in the music, it was getting pretty loud in the background, but here we go. So we're gonna get this showdown started, and um, it's gonna be curious to see. I I would expect the Nervii with those four Oathsworn to be somewhat insurmountable for the Iceni. However, the Iceni does have a slinger advantage. We'll see whether that can be used uh, fully to their advantage. The Levy Freeman begin the uh, Kind of trade-offs here. So Levy Freeman on Levy Freeman action. So a civil war, if you will, of Levy Freeman. The Kush and Parthia start trading shots. These Eastern Slingers are going to be very dangerous. They have the extra damage uh, versus standard Slingers, and they'll be quite dangerous. Though I would expect that um, Kush is going to just come in very offensive. If I had to take my guess, just based off their build, they can't stand around and shoot with Parthia. So I would imagine we're going to see Kush uh, get in here and get into combat quickly on the offensive. We will see whether that pans out. And it turns out that um, the uh, Numidians here, Mesesali and the uh, Tylysians did not want to wait for combat as well. And things get underway quite quickly with some tribal warriors taking on those wannabe Roman legionaries. 
And we've got a push here from Tylus coming through and an attempt to stop them here with some armored riders, but a brutal javelin volley last second there. And so we've got the Oathsworn pouring in. The Numidians are going to have a hard time cleaning up the Oathsworn, and even the tribal warriors, to be fair, uh, because they are very defensive units, and it just it takes a long time to chop through them. Meanwhile, the Nervii are starting to pour in their elite Oathsworn, with some Chosen Sword Band all blobbed up here. I say all blobbed up, not in like a bad way or something, it's just there was a blob here after some initial charges that were going back and forth that gave the Nervii Oathsworn a great entrance into that fight. And meanwhile, the... Um, the Britons are getting some decent engagements on their end on the other side, and then sure enough, Kush and Parthia have just gone head-to-head. -head. There were some initial cavalry charges countering, but of course the line of Hillmen melts like hot butter and uh, just collapses. And that's to be expected. Parthia was expecting it here, and they're going to start falling back. So Kush is going to immediately be in a very good offensive position. They've got Parthia on the move. Now the danger of putting Parthia on the move is can you hit their missiles fast enough to keep from being worn down over the long haul. So you'll see that as Kush um, is pushing on through here and breaking holes in the Parthian line, that they're gonna be countercharged by cavalry. They're gonna be under a withering barrage of horse archer fire. And then the uh, Eastern Slingers are going to move back and try and reform as well. So a good move here by Kush to try and keep those Slingers dead, to not allow them to reform. And that's what they're gonna need to do to be successful. Meanwhile, in the middle, the Oathsworn continues to come up and challenge all the Iceni infantry. Over here, the Iceni get a really nice outflank, which could be bad for the Oathsworn, but they've already got 80-something kills in climbing. The Nervii maintain their slingers, and they are cycling their Oathsworn in and out of combat as they're able to in key spots. And I would say that the Iceni at the moment are probably getting a little bit of the worst side of this engagement, but they are fighting hard. They've still got a number of slingers and have an opportunity here to, uh, to turn that one around. And then as far as the other flank, Tylus and um, the Desert Legionaries here, Tylus is kind of slowly gaining the upper hand, at least in terms of what my eyes tell me. Um, and that's not altogether unexpected. With those Oathsworn mixed in there, those are gonna be very difficult targets for the Desert Legionaries. And then look at the work here by the Celtic Slingers, just pouring fire into the side of those Desert Legionaries. And then that um, noble horse from Tylus uh, really working its magic over here too taking out some of those armored desert riders. So yeah, a tough fight between Tylus and Numidia. I think it's gonna be fairly close, um, but at the same time, like I, I feel like the momentum may be a little bit on the side of Tylus here based on what I'm seeing, but we'll see. We still got some of these critical units out here like this Numidian Noble Cavalry. Um, we can see what it can do if it gets into the back lines. Might be able to cause a little bit of havoc and help turn things around. But meanwhile, with the Britain Nervii showdown, um, we can certainly see here that the Iceni are starting to be worn down by that line of Oathsworn. I kind of expected this from the beginning, but look at this. Here comes some help. The Kushite Royal Guard Cavalry headed that way. The Oathsworn is going to move to head it off. And meanwhile, Parthia is kind of doing what I expected they would, which would be to fall back, delay, cycle charge, and use missiles. And Kush is slowly being worn down here. They still have a lot of units, um, but those units are not quite as fast as Parthia. These horse archers still being alive is very problematic for Kush right now, and it's it's definitely going to give them fits. You can see the slingers, though, fall back. They continue to be targets, and you're going to see Kush and uh, the Iceni push them here, and then you're going to see the horse archers bring their focus in. This is not unsurprising. These horse archers are very dangerous. They cause a tremendous amount of damage, and they can move quickly um, to get in good positions. You still have some Kushite Royal Guard Cav, though, and they're going to be after these noble horse archers, no doubt and they'll need to flee um, probably through this fight. They'll probably put a quick charge there and then keep moving and allow those uh, horse archers to cover them. Meanwhile, Kush did send some reinforcements in the form of their slave slingers and a Shotel warrior out towards the Iceni to try and help. Um, I'm, I would imagine the red team or the away team here uh, is going to be uh, trying to pull together you know, this fight over here because it does look like Tylus is succeeding and then they'll want to push towards the middle before Parthia can combine with Nervii. So I think it's a race right now for one team to try and roll up one flank and combine on the other. Um, and we'll see whether that goes. But I mean, if you look out here, the uh, Mesazali doing a good job of just kind of holding in this fight for a long time. As expected, they did get overpowered uh, by Tylus. But you can see here, fighting to the death. Nice job. The uh, noble horse for Tylus now under uh, tremendous 
uh, distress here, and you can see that the general actually dies, so that will hurt Tylus a little bit. They don't have a ton of discipline, but I would imagine their tougher sword units are going to stick around. They're not likely to rout there. Meanwhile, the Nervii have mostly cleaned up the Iceni. There's still a few units here and there, and we've got the Mighty Horse pushing over here into the, uh, the Britain Slingers, which is definitely a good call. There's some fierce swords to help hold that Kushite guard while these Mighty Horse do some work, but that Kushite guard cab is going to be massively powerful. I like this push here, though. Those Levy Freeman to come and try and get these Slingers up off the flank so that their horsemen don't get shredded. Some of these Oathsworn did survive their fights. You can see a lot of kills on those Oathsworn. Very powerful units. All the Oathsworn survived, I should say. Wow, every single sword infantry, major sword infantry unit, I should say, did survive that fight, so an excellent job there by the Nervii player um, in a tough melee. Noble Horse Archers acted like they were going to charge this Armored Chotel Warrior. Instead, they end up stuck and get hit on the hoof by the Kushite Royal Guard Cav and the Armored Chotel Warrior. That's going to hurt. So Parthia's general in some pretty real danger here. He's going to fall back, but Parthia has some nasty stuff waiting back here. I like the flaming arrows here. That was an attempt to get that unit to route a little quicker. Um, nice tool in the, uh, the toolkit of Parthia there. That Kushite Royal Guard Cavalry now going to just really eat the missiles, and it can only take so much. They have performed quite valiantly in this battle, and they're not done yet. They just got into these slingers, and they're likely to kill a huge number of those slingers before all is said and done, so I would expect those kills to rocket up over 200. And that said, Tylus does look like it's about to finally finish its fight, and the Numidians gave them quite a fight. We have a tribal warrior, um, let's see, two of those, an Oath Sworn at about half strength, another oath sworn out here just kind of still barely hanging on so um and then the uh, noble horse again barely hanging on so a pretty epic struggle there by numidia in terms of making tylus pay not only a uh, a price of time but a price of soldiers here which is definitely leaving the home team looking to be in good shape and the power bar agrees here those deadly armored chotel warriors ended up spending a lot of the battle kind of trying to get after cheap infantry units, so it's not likely that they ever really gain their their full value in terms of uh, just, you know, uh, going up against elite infantry. It makes me wonder, and, I, and of course I don't, I haven't played the game enough recently to know for sure, but it makes me wonder what it would have looked like with the uh, Kush coming up against the Nervii there in the middle. Um, it may not have turned out any different. Uh, four Oaths Sworn is a tremendous amount to overcome. But those Armored Chotel Warriors, for instance, would uh, would do well in fights against Oathsworn, if, assuming they get into that fight uh, without getting devastated by cavalry or, or missiles, of course. But here we're going to have the remnants of the two uh, the two armies coming together. Look at that. Um, the Midian Noble Cavalry still going after all this time. 144 kills. You don't want to underestimate these units. They don't carry a spear, and they don't get the bonus versus large, but they have a tremendously high melee attack and they will do a lot of damage in the right situations, and then their javelins are also very dangerous. So they can hurt you quite badly in the right situations, but they're also a little risky, right? Because you get them into the wrong situation, and they can fall apart quite quickly for a, a decent amount of cost. Certainly a cool unit, though, to be sure. All right, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit as these two armies are moving to go face off with each other. I think that was probably a second win. Yeah, second win going down on that Oathsworn. It's a good call right here before the, the final battle. Second wind is a very valuable um, army ability, or general ability, I should say. So these mercenary Sarmatian horse archers should be able to pressure the slingers pretty well um, for Tylus. It looks like they still have ammunition left too, that they're coming in here to pour into these spear warriors, try and weaken up that infantry. Celtic slingers appear to be out of ammunition, so they're kind of just being used as charge bait at the moment. Those noble horse archers still firing. Good gravy. 231 kills, double chevron. That unit is getting its money's worth. Those oaths weren't are brutal. Let's see over here, we got uh, a Tylisian oath sworn pouring in it against a mighty horse, and then with the help of some raiding horsemen. Raiding horsemen, pretty decent melee combatants after all is said and done. That's a fair number of oaths sworn here, but those, those oaths sworn are going to be tremendously outnumbered, but look at what they do. Look at them just racking up kills there. These brave Tylesian soldiers refusing to back down in the face of overwhelming odds and continue to slaughter their opponents mercilessly. 
But I think it is well and truly over, uh, despite the heroic last stand efforts of Tylus here. And it is a good effort. You got their slingers back here. Look at this oath sworn, and these guys are like, okay, maybe maybe we've had enough now. <laughs> they won't be able to run forever. Uh, I think that they may use these raiding horsemen. Nope, they're going to head towards the middle. Yeah, there's just too many units. Tylus is going to get overwhelmed here. And the nervy I oath sworn going to be coming into this uh, ready to rock and roll. Few tribal warriors left over here, but they're going to be overwhelmed. Uh, there's an oath sworn headed that way. The noble horse archers coming in to pad its kill count even further. On top of those Celtic slingers, they may well get to 300. Not oof. yeah, it's going to be close. They're going to be hovering on it. So a pretty epic battle between these two factions and a bunch of great players from two good clans. So it's really cool to see this. It's actually Sol Invictus who sent it over, though I don't believe he actually played in this one. But uh, this was definitely an epic battle. I enjoyed this one. A lot of good players, you can tell, on the battlefield here. And uh, definitely some some very skilled uh, people on both sides of it. Let's take a look at the, the stats here. We'll want to see... Oh yeah, I recognize some of these names. Uh, definitely some some strong players here. So let's see. Uh, Ram here with the Mesazali. We'll take a look at some of his key units. Pretty good performance out of that Armored Rider. And then uh, good performance out of the Nobles. A really tough fight for his infantry. Although, again... You don't want to underestimate these Mesazali legionaries. They're actually pretty good. Um, so, I mean, they're definitely a, a potentially tough unit there. And if we take a look at Vortigant Sauce here, uh, really nice performance from those noble horse archers. A couple of his cataphracts did manage to get a good number of kills. Um, some of them had a chevron regardless of the slightly lower number of kills. So ultimately they were able to perform. But I think these horse archers are the real MVP between the general and these three for, uh, for Parthia. They just did tremendous damage. Um, to a lot of the key units, and of course they were softened by the cataphracts for sure. And then those slingers just trying to hang in that fight. And then the poor hillmen, knowing that they were coming to the battle to have their lives thrown away as a sacrifice to the gods, um, so that the rest of the army could be there. It's always a tough job to be a hillman in Rome too. And then the Nervii here with uh, Barefoot, um, really solid performance out of the Oath Sworn. I think that I think a clutch play here was the fact that the Nervii player was able to get his Oath Sworn into the engagements without getting savaged by cavalry, which was very important, or without getting savaged by missiles, right? Because when you invest all this money into several Oath Sworn units like this, you take a big risk in the sense that your enemy now has uh, fewer targets that they can pour their effort into and take out a lot of your funds. Um, so I think a good job by the Nervii here in the center. The center is always a tough place to play. Speaking of center, let's take a look at AEG Shotel here, which interesting is Shotel was actually playing as the Iceni and not his Shotel uh, wielding uh, namesake there. But um, we got a good performance out of the Heroic Noble, 152 kills in a really tough fight. You can see these Chosen Sword Band just struggled, and that's understandably so. I mean, there was a lot of them, but they ended up in a fight against a heavyweight where they're, they're just going to struggle some. Uh, but if we take a look at other units, nice kills here on this Chosen Spear Band and some pretty decent work on some of the Iceni Slingers. Uh, and some nice kills on some of the veteran riders. So again, a tough position for the Iceni there, but still you can see the skill coming out there for Chotel getting a lot of kills. And then we'll take a look at Spartacus here with the Kush. Holy crap, man, those Kushite Royal Guard Cab, a couple of them just absolutely racking it up. This one didn't get as many kills, but still shows a Chevron popping up. And these deadly Chotel Warrior Infantry just crushing through the Hillman. No surprise there. The Armored Chotel Warrior, though, was the tricky one. And um, these may be cataphract kills, and those could be chevrons from the battle. I didn't get a chance to see whether or not that unit was chevron from the beginning. But remember, these guys have a whopping, I want to say it's like 25 armor penetrating uh, damage. And so they're very, very dangerous if they can get into a cavalry fight after the charge. And then Alucard here uh, coming in with Tylus, and we saw him win that fight against the Mesazali on the other flank. And a tough fight it was with Ram. Uh, but, I mean, these Tylusian units are tanks. And they do what they do well. And when they get into a fight without getting, you know, again, savaged by cav or missiles, they will get in there and tank for a long time. And, of course, the Oathsworn are the offensive power here. Um, they're going to do very well at cutting through, whereas the tribal warriors are going to be more armored and defensive. They do good damage, though. Um, and so over time in that fight, since they're making the fight take longer, they will end up doing a lot of damage because of that. So... Really fun battle. Appreciate all the players. Hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. And I'll see you soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.